First row, third seat. Bobby Manning, CLNS Media. Jason, when you look back at Ime first becoming head coach, I felt like one of the first things he prioritized was helping you become a better playmaker. Just what were some of those early conversations like with him and just how, how much did you believe in yourself as a playmaker before he arrived and thought that could be something you did? Yeah, I think, um, and that was kind of his, his message from day one, just to challenge me to be, you know, the best player that I can be um, and improve, you know, other areas of my game. And, you know, we watched a lot of film uh, throughout the course of the season um, of games of just areas, you know, you know, things I could improve on. And, um, you know, obviously playmaking was one, drawing a lot of attention, um, you know, just to help the team out as much as, as possible. Um, you know, so, you know, he's done a great job of challenging myself and, you know, just the group um, in that in that aspect. Fourth row on the left, Gary Washburn. Uh, Gary Washburn, Boston Globe. Jason, when you don't score in the fourth quarter, but the team scores 40, you, you have assists, you play make, but you offensively you're off. How do you walk away from a game like that when you're not good offensively, but the team is good otherwise? Uh, ecstatic right 40 points in the fourth quarter jb played big um al payton d white you know those guys made big shots um timely shots as well um and and we won right you know i didn't i had you know bad shooting night um you know i just tried to impact the game in other ways you know um we're in the championship we're in the finals uh you know all i was worried about was trying to get a win, um, and, and, and we did. Um, and that's all that matters at, at this point. So, um, you know, I don't expect to shoot that bad again, but if it means we keep winning, I'll take it. Fourth row on the right, Tim Bontemps. Hey, Jason, uh, two things quick. Uh, first of all, you guys have had a pretty crazy season, lots of ups and downs. Seemed like that second half kind of encapsulated that. What allowed you guys to kind of keep your heads after another rough third quarter and then respond the way you did in the fourth? Uh, the message in the, the start of the fourth was just, you know, we've been here before. Um, you know, we we know what it takes to, to overcome a deficit like that. Um, obviously, that's a great team. You know, it's not going to be easy, but um, just knowing that we've been in that situation before um, and we've gotten ourselves out of it. Um, and we had a lot of time left, right? So, you know, it wasn't time to hang your head or be down. It's time to figure it out. Third row. When you're playmaking specifically, I think you had seven assists in the first quarter early in the first half, and it, it seemed like you were able to kind of get going that way early. Was there was there anything they were doing specifically that opened that up for you, or was that just a matter of you know seeing open shooters and hitting guys? Um, and just reading the reading the reading the play. Um, you know they do a great job of helping and things like that. Uh, so you know obviously it, it's just as simple as you know if you draw two, you know find somebody that's open. Um, you know, that's what I was just trying to do. Third row in the middle. Matt Votor, Mass Live. Jason, after a couple of your bigger wins against Miami, you talked about how there was, it was human nature to kind of feel confident and let up a little bit. Did you feel like you guys took some lessons from that that, that are really important to apply now going into, into game two? Yeah, I think so. And, I, and just knowing that, right, our last two series, we lost game one. Uh, you know, and, you know, this time of the season is so, you know, the, you feel great after you win and, you you know, you feel terrible after you lose. Um, and, you know, you, you, you got to just be able to stay, you know, mellow, stay balanced, um, especially this early, you know, it's far from over, right? It's just one game. Um, and, you know, we got to be ready for them to respond as if, you know, we would if we lost the first game, you know, they're going to come out, you know, they're going to make adjustments and things like that. So we have to be prepared, um, you know, and just approach it one game at a time. Last question to Steve Ashburn. Uh, Steve Ashburn or NBA.com. Um, you and Jalen and Marcus and some others have had this building for several seasons and, and you had it rolling after the first of the year and all of a sudden Derek White gets dropped in as a new guy. What was your reaction to his arrival and, and how did you guys make him fit in in a way that was good for your team and good for him? 
Um, I, had, I had played with Derek White uh, with the USA Basketball 2019. Um, so I was familiar with him. Smart and JB did as well. Uh, and Coach, you know, Will Hardy and, you know, Udoka was on the staff. So he was, we were familiar with him, and he knew a lot of the guys. Um, and Derek is just such a smart basketball player. Uh, you know, he could fit in anywhere. You know, I'm glad we got him. Uh, but he just knows how to play the right way uh, on both ends of the floor. So, you know, we just kept it going, you know, as soon as we got him. Thanks a lot, Jason. Jalen's going to be coming up right away. Thank you.